We're now going to go over two more linear programming problems, a minimum problem and a maximum problem. We're going to solving them using Solver. The first one has some fashion relationships. Betsy Johnson has warehouses in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and Charlotte, North Carolina. The company receives orders from Macy's department stores in New York City and in Boston. The Macy's in New York City needs 200 purses and Boston needs 175 purses. The Pittsburgh warehouse has 450 purses and the warehouse in Charlotte has 300 purses ready to ship. The cost of shipping from Pittsburgh to New York City is $1.50 per purse and from Pittsburgh to Boston is $2 per purse. From Charlotte to New York City is $1 and from Charlotte to Boston is $1.50 per purse. We need to find the number of purses to be shipped from each warehouse in order to minimize the cost. So let's look at the way we organize the data. We have Pittsburgh and Charlotte, the warehouses. Each one has 400, Pittsburgh has 450 purses. Charlotte has 300 purses in their warehouse. Both warehouses has to ship to both New York City and to Boston. Pittsburgh will ship at $1.50 per purse to New York City, $2 per purse to Boston. From Charlotte, it's cost $1 to ship to New York City and $1.50 to Boston. Now, in order to be able to do this, we have to identify our variables. So let's look at how we're going to do that. We're going to use four different variables. We are going to say that A represents the number of purses shipped from Pittsburgh to New York City. B represents the number of purses shipped from Pittsburgh to Boston. C represents the number of purses shipped from Charlotte to New York City. And D represents the number of purses shipped from Charlotte to Boston. Now, basically, because we want to be able to minimize the cost, the objective function says we are going to minimize the cost. Therefore, we take $1.50 times A plus the 2 times the B for the shipment of purses from Pittsburgh plus $1 times C plus $1.50 times B for the shipment of Charlotte to Boston. So that's the cost function. Now we have the constraint. Pittsburgh is shipping A, person, a number of purses to New York City and B number of purses to Boston. And since they have a total of 450 purses, we say A plus B has to be less than or equal to 450 since you cannot ship more purses than you have. Charlotte has 300 purses. They're shipping C to New York City and D to Boston. So therefore, C plus D must be less than or equal to 300. Now, New York City said that they need 200 pur purses. Since A purses are going to be shipped from Pittsburgh to New York, and C purses are being shipped from Charlotte to New York City. A plus C must be greater than or equal to 200. According to the Boston store, since they have an order of 175 purses, B purses are shipped from Pittsburgh to Boston, and D number of purses are shipped from Charlotte to Boston. B plus D has to be greater than or equal to 175. Now, for the trivial constraints, we have to make sure that the number of purses shipped are always a positive number. Therefore, A, B, C, and D must be all greater than or equal to zero. Now, we're going to set up for solver. We put down our four variables, A, B, C, and D. I'm going to centralize it so it looks a little prettier. Because the smallest number of purses shipped from each one is zero, we initialize with A, B, C, and D being zero. And we are going to put all the numerical coefficients from the algebraic expression under the A, B, C, and D in the column. So we have 1.5 for the A, 2 for the B, 1 for the C, and 1.5 for the D for the objective function. A has the numerical coefficient of 1. B has the numerical coefficient of 1 for the Pittsburgh constraint. C and D are not included. That has to be less than or equal to 450. Charlotte is shipping C number of purses and D number of purses. That's less than or equal to 300. New York City is receiving shipments from Pittsburgh. That's one. None. The Boston is B, so we have zero. And C number of purses from Charlotte. That's also one, and that has to be greater than or equal to 200. They can get the 200, but it cannot be less than that. Boston is receiving purses also from Pittsburgh and North and Charlotte. 
So therefore, B is 1, C is 1, and A, excuse me, D is 1, and A and C are 0. And that also has to be greater than 175. Again, A is 1, and all the rest of the variables are 0, and the, the constant is 0. B is 1, everything else is 0. C is 1, everything else is 0. And D is 1, everything else is 0. Now that we have that, we have to evaluate all of the algebraic expressions. So we're going to set up our formula where we always start with an equal. So we have equals, and let's make sure that that looks nice, equals, one equal sign, $1.50 times the value of A, and since which is 0. And since we want to copy it, we're going to make sure we have a fixed cell, plus 2 times the zero value of B, again, we want to make that a fixed cell, which is, remember, the F4 on the PC, plus 1 times the value of C, which is zero. Again, make the zero for the C a fixed cell. And lastly, plus the 1.5 times the value of D, which is, again, is zero. And we make that a fixed cell, and we get zero. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to copy this to the other cells. So remember, we go to the plus sign underneath. We copy it all the way down for all of the other equations. And you notice if you click on the constraint for Pittsburgh, you get the appropriate formula. If we go to the one for the store, for the New York store, again, you see the appropriate formula. So it is now set up correctly, and we are going to solve it. So we go to our data button, and we go to solver. Now, in order to go to solver, and I'm going to say reset all so everything is fresh, the first thing we're going to put in is the objective functions value, which is in my cell M27, because the template automatically goes to maximize. We have to click on minimum. Now we're going to go and going to change the values for the A, B, C, and D. So we want to change those zeros. Now we're ready to go into the constraints. So we're going to add all the constraints. The first constraint is for the Pittsburgh shipping. So we go to the value of the algebraic expression. We see that that is, let's go back, it is less than or equal to. So we're going to put the less than or equal to 450. Now we're going to go to the Charlotte constraint. Again, we have Z has to be less than or equal to the 300. Now we go to the New York City Macy's, which we have 0 has to be greater than or equal to 200. Next, we have the Boston constraint, where we have 0, again, has to be greater than or equal to 175. And now the trivial constraints, A has to be greater than or equal to 0. B has to be greater than or equal to 0. Now we go to C has to be greater than or equal to 0. And lastly, D has to be greater than or equal to 0. Once we finished all the constraints, we click OK, and then we're going to check. Remember, the equations were in column M. Column L has the constants. So we see the M's on the left-hand side, the L's on the right-hand side. We see row 29 is less than or equal to, row 30 is less than or equal to, 31 through 36 are all greater than or equal to, so it looks like it is set up correctly. We go to our simplex sol solution method. We press solve, and we notice that 75 purses are going to be shipped from Charlotte to New York. 200 are going to be shipped, excuse me, 75 purses are going to be shipped from, from Pittsburgh to New York. 200 purses are going to be shipped from Charlotte to New York. And 100 purses are going to be shipped from Charlotte to Boston, which gives us the minimum cost of 500. So we now have our solution, and we can write the solution down. Let's get that over there.
Let's try to formulate it. I apologize for this. And the solution is with the minimum cost is going to be $500 when um, Pittsburgh ships 75 purses to Boston. Um, Charlotte ships. Let's get that in the screen. Charlotte ships. Um, 200 purses to New York City, and let's type that correctly, and 100 purses to Boston.